Good evening and welcome to our AAIP webinar. Today we are going to be going over uh, the staff meeting. This is our video module uh, for staff training uh, on the on a staff meeting. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to go over a few things. One is next Wednesday, the 25th, uh, Dr. Sheldon and I will be um, speaking to the directors um, at the uh, CL Study Club, which is going to be in Orlando. So if you if you are going, if you're going to be going to the study club, uh, please check your directory and come and see us. We also, um, one other thing, we do have a change in our schedule. And that is, uh, we were scheduled on January 31st to do the um, next uh, webinar of January, but we're going to move that to February 1st. Uh, we had something else that we had to go to on the 31st for the staff, so we're going to move the 31st to February 1st, and that will be the case presentation um, webinar for for the month. So please make note of that. We'll also, of course, send out reminders for that. Um, in addition to next week, Wednesday, speaking at the uh, Seattle Study Club, we're also going to be in, a um, in April, we're going to be in New Jersey. We're going to be speaking to a period group there. And, um, and then, of course, we're going to be at the AAP in Boston in September. So far, those are things that we have upcoming as far as our speaking arrangements. Um, so I do hope that we see you guys at one of those. Um, everybody did receive a pretty large essay written by uh, Dr. Sheldon when he was supposed to be on vacation over the last four weeks. Um, but I know he was working on a pretty large essay, and we have been getting a lot of responses from that. So if you haven't yet had time to read over the essay, uh, please check it out. And if you have any questions or comments, Dr. Sheldon does love to get those. Um, we also um, we have a Facebook page coming soon, something we've always wanted to kind of get together. Um, recently have a new member that has volunteered and taken on that position, and uh, we're very excited to see that coming. So as soon as we get that up and going, we will let you know um, as well. So we get some good information on that, some good um, some a good blog and such on that it would be a great thing for us to get started. So some good stuff that we have coming up. Um, so like I said, tonight we're going to be going over uh, how we do a staff meeting, which is of course how we um, recommend you do a staff meeting. It's very effective for us. Uh, we plan and look forward to these every single week. Yes, every single week we do a staff meeting. Um, I've, I have offices that do it every other week, fine. That's fine. We have um, offices that do it once a month. Don't really think that's a good idea. It's just too long with span. Um, and then we have offices that don't do them at all, which is a horrible idea. Um, but the reasons why we hear that people don't do them is because they say, we've tried them, we've done them, they're not effective, they don't work, they turn into gripe sessions. Um, it's, it just doesn't work for us. Um, so we are going to show you a way to make them not a gripe session where they are very effective and you can get communication out, you can get education in, um, and it can be something that is very effective for you. We usually, well, we, we block our staff meetings for an hour. Uh, usually we find that you can spend the first 30 minutes really going over um, material for a staff meeting and then the rest of the time you can use for education. So we will pick something every week to educate the staff on. Maybe it's a new piece of equipment, maybe it's a new material, maybe it's education on um, some difficulties a staff member had explaining something to a patient or um, some kind of difficulty, difficulty they had with the patient, so they'll ask the question, they'll submit it to Dr. Sheldon and I during the week and then we will we usually pick um, something to educate the staff on. Um, and it's always it goes very very well. Um, so we recommend that same type of template when you are doing your staff meetings. If you follow the staff meeting the way we do it, and you stick to your guns on what you allow, what you don't allow, they won't be gripe sessions, and they're so so effective. Usually we play the video and then we go back through the video, and I you know talk about it. This, because the staff meeting video is about 30 minutes long, 
I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stop it as it goes along to just comment on a few things. Again, we're going to send you this. You don't have to make great notes, but this template structure is what I want you to, to key on. We start from start to finish. We do the exact same guidelines every single time. So here we go, the video for the staff meeting. Staff meeting can be one of the most important parts of your day. I know that sometimes you find staff meetings to be difficult and perhaps there's some complaining and that type of thing. Staff meetings don't have to be that way as long as you structure it properly. Correct. We, we do our staff meetings once a week and we do it once a week because we want to keep full control of our numbers. Uh, we have talked about doing them more long term, uh, once every two weeks, once a month, which some people do, but we feel like that, that would give us a, a chance for the numbers to kind of get more out of control. We find that staff meetings once a week are very motivational. Um, it helps our, our staff um, stay excited um, and it helps them keep involved in what they can do to either keep our stats going well or, or getting better. Um, and how we keep them from uh, becoming gripe sessions is we do have the flaps and handlings, which is the first thing we do. And as you'll see from the video, we uh, staff can participate in, in that uh, to come up with uh, a problem of the week, but they have to have a solution attached to that problem. Um, and then we go from that, we go to wins. Wins are to bring it more uplifting, to something more positive, to go from the problems of the week to uh, great things that happen in the week. And that usually, as you'll see in the video as well, we encourage everybody to bring one, at least someone in charge of a department to bring some so that we have good things happening within the office. Uh, we go from that, we go to our, our stats and our graphs, and you'll see that we show everybody, we want, we want everybody to know how this, the office is doing because we can't come together with solutions unless we all know what's going on. So we, we show the stats, uh, we show the graphs, and then we come up with a battle plan, and together, as you'll see, we have people assigned to each uh, part of that plan so they know exactly what they need to do to get our stats better. So as you take a look at this video, see how you could arrange your staff meeting to be productive. And believe me, it'll become an important part of your practice, an important part of your week. Yep. Make it fun. Make, make it interactive. Um, and that way, uh, every single week, the, the staff looks forward to them instead of um, not looking forward to them. Enjoy the video. So again, like I said on this, it's the key parts to create the exact same structure and template for your meeting every single week. So it starts out with flaps and handlings first and immediately every single week. It follows, what follows that is the wins. So we're going to announce some great things. Then we go to stats and graphs to show the entire staff, the stats and the graph for that week. And then a battle plan of how we're going to either continue doing the great, same great thing or what we're going to do to get better. And then from that, we go to the education portion of the staff meeting. It's the exact same template every single week. And it's up to you and your, and your office manager to create that staff meeting um, you know, the day before, the, the, a few days before, however you do it. Um, and that way, you plug in what's needed from the past week to that meeting so that you can have uh, a better week that next time. All right, flaps and handlings. If we can take um, PAs instead of bite wings uh, for final in the POT force, or, or when we seed the crowns on implants, uh, we need to see the whole tooth or the implant. I guess we're not seeing all the way down all right. when you're checking off and signing off on the POT four. All right, good. So everything is PO. Everything is is PAs instead of bite wings. Good. Any other flaps and handlings from anybody? So what, when we're doing the flaps and handlings, and flaps is the problem, handle is the solution. So in, where the gripe session thing comes in is where all we're asking is, okay, what was the problems of last week? So all you're going to have is people pouring out problems from the past week. If you don't have a handle associated with that problem, then of course it's going to be negative, negative. But for us calling it flaps and handlings, 
what we're doing is we're saying, okay, this was the problem, here is the solution. And sometimes the solution that the person comes up with is not the best solution. So we may go around the group a few times to come up with a better solution, which is fine as well. At least we're going in the direction of solutions and we're not stopping on problems which can offend people and bother people and, you know, so always have a handle. Uh, we had the uh, Dexas Carry View training a couple weeks ago and the one uh, tip that the trainer gave us is uh, in the Dexas there's a green X use that everywhere you can rather than the top right corner red X. Um, she said we'll run into a lot less problems if we use um, these green X's uh, both on the patient chart and like the master um, Dexas patient screen. Um, so that's something new I've never learned before. Yeah, I've got to learn how to use it too. Good. Um, we need to make sure that we're using remote desktops still in each of the rooms. So we had a couple notes lost last week, and um, they were due to not having remote desktop up in the in the room. Another one is now that we have our beautiful floors in room one and four, they're darker, and so they show everything. So make sure after every patient you scan the floor and um, we've got the handheld vac in sterilization and um, so you can run and grab that of course we've got the um, the broom and stuff in sterilization as well um, the last one i have is to turn off blue note after the doctor has come into the room please turn it off we see things sitting there for 45 minutes or whatever like that. We're assuming someone's taking care of it, but please turn it off so we're not still running around finding out. Good. Any other flaps and handlings? Jennifer? Okay, last week we had Dr. Matt scheduled for a bridge. Um, he was running an hour late in that bridge. Come to find out it was two bridges and they were in implant supported bridges. So when you're doing your checkout uh, slip for the patient, please identify what it is that we're doing and make it very clear separating implant supported from regular because it is a lot more time consuming with the abutments. Um, next item is when you're printing uh, to the copier, go get it. We're spending a lot of time trying to sort through and figure out what someone's printed, where it goes, and it's causing a lot of dev tea, so plus it's a lot of wasted paper we don't need to have. Um, Oh, documents that you're putting in the scan folder. If it doesn't need to be scanned, don't put it in there. I think we're just kind of grouping everything together, copying it from financial arrangements and not looking to see that, yes, this document doesn't need to be uh, scanned because it makes it very confusing when they're trying to put it in the system. And then the last thing, um, just a reminder to make sure that if the patient is not the main subscriber on insurance, get the date of birth of the one that is the main subscriber so that way we can go ahead and process it patient as you can see i'm making a whole lot of notes during this portion of the staff meeting and the reason why is because it doesn't stop at the staff meeting um, afterwards what i do is I, I i compile everything together for a, f a few reasons one if there's changes made to policy if there's changes made to how we do things in a certain area i have to publish those so i have to change the policy manual. I have to um, make updates and changes so that things remain that way. Um, the other thing is, um, is I want to make sure it gets done. So if there's, uh, if there's staff that's requesting something for an area, a need for something, if Dr. Sheldon is asking me for something, I need to make sure that I write it all down so that I can actually go and do it, not just say, okay, 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 yep, good idea, good idea. I'm making sure everything actually gets done. I usually, um, by the end of the week, I send Dr. Sheldon an email just to say, this was done, this was done, this was done, and so he knows everything that had come up or everything that was a concern or a problem, it was actually taken care of and we're done for the week. So I make sure that I'm getting everything down so it's not just talked about, it's actually being done. Patients get upset when the insurance kicks back because it's the wrong person. Okay. Anybody else have any flaps and handlings? 
Um, one other one that I had, um, it's been noticed that a lot of the assistants have been using abbreviations for treatment, like uh, your next appointment will be a POT or I'm going to take you to <coughs> FA. Patients don't know what that means, so just be sure to say what it is or where it is that they're going so they understand what's going on. Um, any other ones? Anybody else? All right, how about wins? Yeah, Good things. We had a great week last week. Great week. Now, flaps and handlings, I don't want to say they're negative, but it's, you know, of course they're, they're down or things. It's things that are not going really well. As soon as we say when, you see everybody starts to smile. Um, it's, it's an introduction to happy stuff because I don't want to leave on a negative note. I want to leave the meeting on a positive note. So it's good things. Now, flaps and handlings and wins as well. What I hear a lot from our members is the very first staff meeting that is done this way. You have tons of flaps and handlings, and you have tons of wins. You guys have never done it before. Of course you're going to. And then the next time and the next time, nobody has any. So as an office manager, I have to sometimes pull it out of people during the week. So I ask um, different leads in different departments what were some problems this week, what were some things that didn't go well this week. I ask people, um, other staff members, um, what are any problems that you had. I have my eyes and ears open, of course, all day long. I catch things, I write them down. So sometimes I have to push that. I have to actually draw it and pull it from people so we have some stuff to work with. Same thing for wins. I, you guys have great things that happen all day long, so do we. But you just sometimes forget about them after four or five days or so. So I make people write them down. Um, so each department has a, a sheet of paper, it has wins, flaps and handling, so people can log this all day long so you don't forget about them because we want to hear about them. We want to hear when a patient was excited, happy, referred somebody, brought us something. You don't want to forget this stuff and, and I don't want it to go unnoticed or, or unknown by any of our staff members, so announce them. It's Rebecca's birthday on Thursday. <laughs> Happy birthday, <laughs> Rebecca. I know how old you are. <laughs> That's not a win. That's a flat hand. <laughs> and my second one is I got this cute little card from a patient thanking me for all the tips I gave her on, you know, cleaning her teeth. Like, oh, you know, good. little proxy brushes and different things. I thought that was very nice. It is. Send a card. Patients love goodie bags. That's right. And extra time. Good job, Sue. And I have a big win. Um, I have two health coaching patients. One went through four weeks and she did really, really good. She identified that she was a sugar addict. She got rid of all the bad food. She's lost 20 pounds. Oh, wow. She's working on personal growth to keep all of this, you know, in a forward momentum. Um, so she signed up for four more weeks. And then yesterday, Dr. Sheldon brought me in, which I thought was really cool. And he's promised to do that once a day That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, for a patient. You know, he identified that she could use some help with her diet and everything. So I, it was really easy for me just to go right in there and continue on with her. And so she signed up also. Oh, good. So it's, I'm really excited about that because a lot of our patients, like everyone that walks through the door, probably could use some health coaching. <laughs> yeah. So. But here was the deal with her. It was interesting. This was an implant check. And I think we'd done the implant like in... 2012 or something like that. And so I was, and it was two lateral sizes. So I was looking at the teeth and there was enamel that was gone on the linguals of the adjacent incisors. So I said, well, that seems kind of weird. And so then I talked with her and I said, um, do you have acid reflux? She says, I use Tums every day. And then we took the nitrazine test paper, the pH test paper. We put it in her mouth, and in the morning, after she would have brushed her teeth and taken care of herself, it was 5.5, and the normal is 7 or 7.2. So we had all of these cues, and then I said, are you getting any help with any of these, uh, of these problems? Uh, because you're dissolving the enamel on, on, on the inside of your, uh, of your incisors. Um, and she said, no. Would you be willing to talk with Lisa, who's a nutritionist? And she said, yes. And then I could bring in, uh, then I could bring in Lisa very comfortably, and she was willing to listen to Lisa. I have no idea what Lisa said, <laughs> but whatever the case, and we're coming up big wins on, on nutrition, so um, it's something we can all look for, and uh, and uh, let Lisa talk with them. Good job, Lisa. Yeah. Yay. 
I got a win too. Um, I'm noticing the sign, the new sayings on the sign, and I really like them. They're very, very nice. That's one. That's good. <laughs> Two so, is we used Sonic Well last week. Yes, we did. Yes. It was a success. Very good. good. And three, it's been a year I'm here. Yeah. I don't know Yay! So <laughs> April 1st, that's right. Yeah, April 1st. Good. So, we love having you here. We love having you here, Michelle. Thank you. Rebecca loves here. having you here, especially. <laughs> <laughs> Every week, we. Yeah. She never said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Follow that up with Stephanie's win, one year anniversary. Oh, nice. Right. Right. Yay! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Any of the wins, girls? Um, I think the teamwork through the whole office has been awesome, and. I'm just very comfortable being here, and it's going well. I'm happy. Yay. We're Good happy win. to enjoy. Thank you. We did have last week, um, a win was we did lose one of our uh, financial assistants, and it was kind of uh, it's kind of scary going, trying to figure out how we're going to um, replace it or make up for it. But everybody did really good last week, jumping in. Um, all the other FA assistants did great, taking over all the current FAs that were going on. And we had a great week and we had a great quarter. So it was that was a great win. So great job to everybody for doing that. It's good. That is. Any other wins that we have? Okay, good. We'll go to our um, stats. We did have, as I just said, we did have an increase um, spike in our collection, great production, um, new patients seen. Uh, we were down 18. Um, uh, we had new patient referrals were down as well to 16. But still, we're even with our lower numbers, we're doing very well. Um, projected this uh, for our production um, is 59. Our, our projected for new patients scheduled is 14, and, and financial appointments is 24. Um, so for our graphs, for our production, um, down slightly for our production. For our referrals, we went down quite a bit on the referrals. I gotta work on that. <laughs> and our collection. Yay. Hey, it's good. So for your statistics, you want to share where you are with your staff because if they don't know where you are and where you need to be, they don't know what to do. So we find that sharing the stats with our team. It, it encourages them and it guides them as to where we need. Now with these graphs, they're visuals and they're wonderful. So I show them every single staff meeting up, down, where we are and where we need to be. So um, that shows them, okay, listen, you guys are doing amazing. We're all doing good. Keep doing the same. Or look, this is what I'm trying to say. We're not doing as good as we, we can be. So we have to do something uh, in this area to improve it. So that's the first thing we do to get attention is give a visual. Give a visual where we are, and that will set me up for my battle plan. Spike up. That's good. So with those um, stats, we are in a normal formula. On call, we have Stephanie for restorative and Tara for surgical. Um, first one on normal is not to change anything, so continue to meet weekly to discuss all cases planned for surgeries and new patients that were seen. That's for Dr. Furtado. Dr. Matt Sheldon and Dr. Sheldon. Second is continue to work with Jennifer to assure surgeries and restorative procedures are scheduled with the correct time needed so we can stay on time. That's for Courtney and Dr. Matt. Uh, next is continue to meet with our team in the mornings to prevent errors during the day. That's for all doctors to meet with their team. Get magazines out and in areas that bring in patients. That's for Eleanor. Continue to maximize new patients and financials per day for Jennifer. Continue written communication, that's for all the staff. Continue to send weekly reports along with end of day and end of week check sheets. Um, these are great when I'm putting together the formula for everybody. That's for Jennifer and Courtney. Uh, continue to send rep uh, restorative reports, um, Stephanie, Katie, and Dr. Matt. Next is ethics are very mild, justice factor is quite mild, there's no savage actions taken particularly. Teamwork, um, as Joy said, the amount of teamwork seen in the office last week was very impressive. So please keep up the work and jump in uh, where help is needed. Great job to everyone. 
Third is a, a statistic better, so look it over carefully and find out what bettered it and do that without abandoning what you were doing before. First one is the, the acceptance stats continues to get better and better. Great job on all this, ladies. Continue to meet weekly as an FA team to work out barriers and come up with new plans and ideas. Jennifer, Joy, Laura, and myself. Continue to spend time building relationships and following up with your patients early to find um, the help that they need for all FA staff. Talk up our office using the Care to Share cards, uh, the charitable giving campaign. Remember, there is a bonus for any patients that you refer to the office, so please put those in your purse or wallet, men, <laughs> all staff. And last, every time a statistic worsens slightly, then quickly find out why and remedy it. So continue to work on phone scheduling training. That's for Sarah and Jennifer to do together. Continue to work on plans needed to help while Stacy is gone. That's for Jennifer. Continue looking for a new financial assistant. That's for Jennifer and myself. Continue to look for a hygienist that can work on Fridays. That's for Jennifer and Rebecca. Continue to work on updating and completing the assistant, restorative, and the front desk uh, hat. The, those need to be completed by July 11th. I keep putting that in there because I know it's a big job, so please take a look at that, all staff. Be sure to follow up on all non-accepted cases by the end of the week and find a successful follow-up for each. If they don't qualify, you can re you can inactivate them. You don't have to put them on the list, and that's for financial staff. Start the graph of new patients that did not accept due to insurance or funds. Jennifer is working on a screening process that will help us with getting more qualified patients in. Please remember to email me or give me the notes, the names of those that didn't schedule due to those reasons. And that's for the financial staff. Make sure all treatment plans are done by the, by, make sure that any treatment plans that are done by other doctors are getting signed off by Dr. Sheldon. That's for FA staff. Continue working on room reconstruction and upgrades. That's for Eleanor. And the last one is work on uncluttering operatories and finding cabinets to match, um, or countertops that match for all the rooms. This will be, uh, that's, those will be to replace the current cabinets or uh, tables tops that are in the rooms now so that everything matches and looks looks good together. That's for Courtney. Any questions on that, anybody? Now, as you can see, I put this battle plan together and I printed a copy for everybody, one for reference while we're having the staff meeting, and two, so that they can take this with them. As you can hear, a person is assigned to each point that I'm making on there. If you don't have it assigned to somebody, then nobody knows who's going to do it, or you, they may assume somebody else is going to do it. If you give an, a name next to each assignment, then they actually go and do it. So at the end of the week, I check up with all these people. Did you do that job? Jennifer, Sarah, did you do this? Did you finish this? Did you complete that? Did you change this? Did you call them? And that way I can mark it off my battle plan. If it does not get done in that week, it stays on the battle plan and it gets carried over to the next week and it stays on there until it's done so that it doesn't get forgotten, overlooked, and just kind of lost in the shuffle. Um, that way all your stuff gets done. This battle plan is created throughout the entire week. It's things I've seen, heard, I've gotten emails about, Dr. Sheldon's come to me about it, other doctors have come to me about it. Um, it showed up in the statistics. Everything is gathered from the prior week um, and that way we can have a better week every single time. So the battle plans, um, if you don't have the total immersion binder, you can find those on our uh, website or you can email us of course on that and all the battle plans are spelled out in that binder so that you can create your own. All right, and Dr. Sheldon you had something. Let's talk a little bit about what happens um, and you know you've just, many of you have just recently studied this so for you it may be a total review for others. Um, well I think for everybody's going to be a review because everybody uh, has done a little bit on communication. So let's talk about communication and get an understanding as to what we're doing and then we can talk about the materials that we use to be able to handle that. So we have a single person here and that can be any of you and what you're doing is to shoot out a communication to somebody. Okay, so I'm talking to you. Stephanie, you're right in front of me. I'm talking to you. So what's the next step in that communication? 
She talk, it, actually, the next step is for you to receive the communication. Okay? Now, what did I just do with you? First of all, I said, Stephanie, and I said something like that. What did that do? Then Stephanie was looking up at me, and then I knew it was okay, because she kind of nodded a little bit. It was okay for me to shoot out the communication to you. And then I asked you a question, what do you do, and you gave me the answer. So essentially what's happening is, I have to have my attention on Stephanie. Stephanie then has to have her attention on me. And this is all from, from, from Hubbard material. I then have the intention to push out a communication to you. You have the intention to receive it. And then finally, I say something and you get it. All of the, I mean, it sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Just to say a couple of words, come on, give me a break. But that's really what's, what's happening. Let's assume, oh, some of you play ball one time or another. So let's assume that I just went like this and didn't say a word to Stephanie. What would happen to her? I'd hit her in the head, you know, something, something really pleasant like that. So what do you do? Stephanie, you ready to catch the ball? <laughs> okay, so, all right, then I have my attention on her. She now has her attention on me. She's not going to get hit in the head. Then I'm going to throw it to her. Stephanie's going to catch it. All of those things need to be done. I have to have the intention to throw it. She has to have the intention to receive it. Then she might even say something like, oh, my hand hurt. <laughs> An acknowledgement then she can do the same thing to me. So now, Stephanie looks at me, says, what? Catch. Catch, <laughs> okay. And I have my attention on her. I have the intention to catch the ball. And that's the completion of the communication cycle. So let's talk about it in terms of how things work in the office. So now, I don't know why I erased this, but, but let's... Let's do that. So let's assume that we're working on communication in the office. What's the best way to communicate in the office? Writing. Writing. Okay. So it's written communication. So now, here is Jennifer. Jennifer has a written piece of communication. Does she go to me and say, here, Lee, I need it right now? No, okay. What does she do? She has this piece of communication and she puts it into our communication box. Why is that? Why wouldn't you just show it to me? Anybody? Yeah, well, essentially, right. Am I ready to, let's assume that. I'm here doing an examination of, on a patient, and am I, am I ready to receive the communication? Okay, so it's dev to your develop traffic. So essentially, if I were disturbing my examination with a patient, um, then I've got my intention on this person, and that person hopefully has his or her attention on me, and now she's sticking a piece of paper in front of my face. What's that gonna do to the relationship that I'm having with that, with, with that other person? Yeah, it's going to mess it up. So essentially then she puts this piece of paper right here into my communication box, and then when I'm ready to receive it, I can go, I can take it out of the communication box, and now I can read that communication. Now should I go, what, what's that, Rebecca? But knowing Jennifer, she might be able to solve it without, without even talking. Well, that's right. Jennifer <laughs> could probably solve it without talking. That's right. <laughs> And the idea is that everybody does solve, solve the situation, and you use me for as last resort, correct? <laughs> okay, good. But let's assume she really wants to answer me, so, uh, so, or I want to answer her. So I do that. I put it into her communication slot, and then, of course, when she's ready, because she may be on the phone or, or doing financial arrangements or whatever she's doing, when she's ready, she can grab it out of the communication box and can see it. Okay? And that's essentially my attention on getting the communication to Jennifer 
or my uh, um, uh, Jennifer's attention on getting communication to me and my attention on getting the communication out when I'm ready to receive the communication. What's the, well, I was going to say, what's the worst thing can happen? There's a lot of worst things that can, can happen. But if you're in the middle of something and you're working on something and you're really going and it's really, really working for you, how much do you like getting interrupted? And how long does it take you to go back and catch up with what you were thinking about when somebody's interrupted you? Anybody got kids? <laughs> Ever happened to you? And so the whole idea is by having this communication box and by using written communication, number one, it's clearer. Oh, I thought you said, well, I thought you said, well, this is what you, no, it's all on a piece of paper so that, it, that it's clear. And second is we give the communication, we're ready to give the communication and we receive the communication, we're ready to receive the communication. Okay, very simple. And that way we can complete this communication cycle using this communication box to assist us in, in making sure that we can complete our cycles of action and at the same time get our communication across uh, to everybody else. How often should we be looking at a communication box? Three times a day. A few times a day, yeah, at least three times a day. We want to make sure we're there because we don't want communication to be stalled. We don't want, we don't want to stop something from happening. So should we, we should be checking at least three times a day to make sure that we're answering that. And it doesn't mean that it's held in our inbox. It means that we're answering the communication so that we can get these, these cycles of action completed. Why? The more cycles of action we complete, the more work we do. The more work we do, the happier we are. The happier we are, maybe the more money we make, huh? And certainly we have very satisfied patients to result. Okay, any questions on this? All right, good. Thanks. So, with that, um, we definitely recommend that you doctors get with your office managers as soon as possible and start planning your next staff meeting. Now, I don't recommend, um, I don't find it effective at all to do your staff meetings at the end of the week for the obvious reasons. You get everybody motivated, educated uh, to move on. They have their weekend, they come back Monday, and it's gone. So I definitely recommend these for the beginning of the week. We have chose to do ours on, on Tuesday. That allows Dr. Sheldon and I to get together on Monday, um, talk about what I have, talk about what he has. I can talk to the leads, I can you know, do my investigations to make sure I have everything um, put together, my meeting material on Monday, and then we can have it ready to go for Tuesday morning. We also have chose to do ours first thing in the morning. When we have decided to do it during a lunch break, we never get a lunch break. If you want to wait till the end of the day, people are tired, they want to go home. Um, however, if you have a half a day on Tuesdays, which I know a few of my offices have half days Tuesdays and Wednesdays, they decide to do it then, um, by all means, that's fine too. We do ours at 6.30 in the morning, so yes, it's extremely early in the morning, but it works for us. It allows staff to get there at 6.30, we have our meeting until 7.30, we have our first patient that starts at 8, so whatever works best for you. Um, you can make it fun, of course, make it positive, you can have people alternate um, to, to bring in things for breakfast, if that's a motivator, um, whatever works, and I have a lot of different um, offices that, that do different things. The most important thing is, is you start planning with that structure. If you need more guidance, of course, you can email us, call us, ask us some questions, but the exact layouts are in the Total Immersion Binder. Um, like I said, most of you have it. If you don't have it, you can find it on our website, um, and that comes up with how to do the stats, how to do the battle plans, how to gather flaps, handlings, wins, um, to, to make it all successful. Any questions, of course, as always, let us know. I'd be happy to help you get this together. Um, and I would ha be happy to hear how your first staff meeting works. Show this to your staff. Let them know what you're going to be doing. Let them know this is what you're going to be duplicating. And, of course, with your office manager um, so that you guys can start planning and doing that. So good luck with your next staff meeting. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>